lessons learned about the ICC 500, which is tornado and hurricane uh, shelter requirements. And we don't deal a lot with tornado and hurricane shelter windows, um, but it is good knowledge to know moving forward if you ever do get it, you can at least know where to look for it. So um, in general, the loads are determined the same way as an ASE 7, uh, just with modifications that they have made, such as the uh, design wind speeds on the next two pages. I have the uh, tornado one and the hurricane one. They just modify the speeds to what it would be uh, for a storm shelter. And then they have other different criteria, such as exposure category. Uh, and so when you're starting something and you know it's gonna be a storm shelter, you gotta make sure that everything lines up with the ICC 500 and their criteria. Another big difference with storm shelters is they also have to be tested. It can work on paper just fine, but it has to be tested. Um, and one interesting thing I found was uh, if you're doing a storm shelter in a building uh, where the rest of the building isn't designed to withstand any kind of hurricane or tornado loads, you have to consider that that storm shelter is standing alone and everything around it's destroyed, so it's fully exposed to uh, nature. Um, and then some of the testing categories to make sure that... So, so, so back up on that, just to, because I have a question. So we have a, a designated area inside of a school and it's got, you know, CMU block walls all around. Does that mean that the the windows that are interior on that part of the, that those need to be ICC Correct. tornado type? Yeah, because you, you have to assume the rest of the building is it gone. It's blown away. So everything the interior has to be designed to withstand okay. it too. Okay. Quick question. Sorry. Keep interrupting. Okay. Are these wind loads 716 tornado wind loads, or is this just part of the ICC report? Just for the ICC 500. I okay. believe 716 actually picked it in spot, but it's 500. That's what I was getting at. I know 716 is the tornado report. Well, this is 2014, so. Okay. Four. Okay. Uh, 16. Um, and then, oh, and this code is obviously not the full code. We have it on in uh, the code references uh, folder if you wanted to read more. Um, and then for the testing, for tornado tests, you have to uh, do an impact test, which is a 15 pound two by four, traveling with speed shown in this table um, below section 305. So if it's 250 miles per hour design speed, you have to do 100 miles per hour for a vertical surface, which most of the time our windows are gonna be the vertical surface. And then for hurricane shelters, it's down to a nine pound two by four, and then the speed shall be half of what the design speed is. So if your design speed's 160, the um, two by four has to travel at 80. Um, and then the last highlight section just refers to where you can find uh, how they're tested, which I've also included uh, on the next page. Um, the, the doors, win windows, and impact protective systems need to be tested to, for a minimum size and a maximum size. So if you look at the second to last page, I forgot the number of the pages. Um, so we have a very small, they're, they're both the same configuration, a single DLO. So we have a very small one that's tested and a, a large one that's tested. They can manufacture any window in between those two and they're ICC approved for testing. They cannot go any bigger than that large one or any smaller than that small one without a new test. Um, and then on page 33 of the photo on the right, um, the, how you, where you do the impact test is uh, for glazed openings, you use the smallest glaze section and you have one at the center of that glaze section and one at the corner of that glaze section within six inches. And then if there's interior mullions, you have to do additional impacts on those mullions. So if you look at the next page, I have a couple figures. Um, where it's the DLO on the bottom left, and then if there's mullions on the bottom right, we do on the center of the mullion and at the end of the mullion. And I have that shown on the uh, example on the last page of I can 
configuration that has simoleons um, where they did the test in the center and edge of the glass as well as the mullion. Um, and then page 40, on top of the impact test, they have to run pressure testing at at least 1.2 1, 1 times the design wind pressure. And for tornado, they don't have to run the impact test with, uh, um, with the uh, pressure test. They can be conducted completely separate. But with hurricane, the impact tests will follow the pressure proof testing. And then after the impact tests, they have to go through a cyclic pressure test as well. And that's described on the previous page under pressure testing. If you so want did we that. do, for the Usuldar projects, did we do the uh, 1.2 times the pressure that we were calculating for mm -hmm. the higher winds? Yes. So, so it, it, like you add that factor to the pressure. And we did because it wasn't clear in what Inselgard gave us, mm -hmm. um, but I think it was a little bit conservative. Okay. But that's fine. So does it have to start off as safety glaze? Or, I mean, what did they call out what the window has to be? Like, is it going to be an IGU that has just a laminated inside board, kind of like we would for missile stuff um, along the Florida coast? Or I believe that the window manufacturers have special windows designated for these. Um, and for instance, these windows were almost, I'd say, like an inch and a half thick solid glass. Um, very heavy. Um, and they're made specifically for storm shelters. Do you know if, it's a, if you're dealing with a tornado or hurricane shelter? Uh, it should be called out in the structure. I think all the ones that we've had so far are from this regard, right? I, I don't think we've had a just a regular project they were quoting that the client forgot to mention that it's a tornado shelter. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is you will know if it's a tornado shelter. We, we've dealt with tornado shelters before, yeah. like with with schools a lot. They their gym is usually designated as a tornado shelter. I guess a good majority of the time we don't see windows on there but I know that we've had yeah. um, projects with those those specific I areas just using the regular frames that they were using some that I, everywhere else. I couldn't tell you what <laughs> what specifically they were using I just you know, know that if they're not if the clients not aware it just uses the typical Conier right. storefront storm max or yeah. yeah the 220 mile per hour wind it, I mean the storefront doesn't stand chance working for those folks so yeah, yeah. and uh, Insulgard even uses a different aluminum alloy right yeah it's a, a stronger aluminum alloy um, they're also the first ones that are fully approved for all their window systems they have that ICC approval. yeah I, have, I watched a video that described it but. so how does this vary from like <coughs> the large missile and small missile testing like Conier has to do for impact hurricane systems along the Florida coast or Texas coast or any of the Gulf, you know, how does this differ from it? Are those considered non-sheltered glazing systems versus this is a room that you can be locked in and secured? I mean, what, do you, what's the difference? Do we know anybody? Yeah, so I mean, the way that that compares is that uh, for hurricane regions where, where you have uh, the the uh, high wind zones that are close to the, the coast, they have uh, small missile impact test requirements, and then the, and then the large missile impact test requirements. So, large missile impact test requirements. I can't remember the design speed of the two by four, but the, right I think it's less than the hundred mile per hour that we get out of this chart that's in there. Uh, but it's similar. Uh, they've got something that is similar, but. Usually that's designated for the entire facility, the entire facility, not just a particular room inside of a, uh, a shelter.
And they also have some provisions regarding the height of the building. So if you're yeah. 30 feet or higher, they do a small, small missile, which mm -hmm. is pebbles basically hitting the yeah. window. So right. basically, you can kind of think of it as potentially one is for, we don't want the, we don't have to re replace the windows every hurricane versus one is, is a massive hurricane, we don't want to die. Or a massive yeah. a tornado, yeah. we don't want people to, you know, get wiped out. Yeah. They gotta have a safe place to go. We'll let the windows do, but we don't want the people to go. The, the interesting thing that I found in this, uh, in, in the charts there, was on, on that wind speed map for tornadoes. I didn't know that tornadoes varied so much from 130 mile per hour to 250. I would have, I would have thought that they would have had a, you know. EF five or whatever it is for it all is places that could be. I, yeah, I guess. I'm not sure. I guess. I thought it was also interesting that Guam was the maximum. Yeah, that uh, is interesting. That um, okay, so Kevin, that's that was a that was a good uh, lesson learned. Um, so you have in the future you have a contractor that comes to you, a glazing contractor, and he says. Kevin, I've, I've, you know, I've got this system here, and I want you to do calculations for uh, the impact loads on it from a tornado to make it a, into a tornado shelter type of a glazing system. Your response? Uh, we don't do the impact uh, calculations other than you'd be tested. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for the new people, I wanted that to be clear. We actually cannot do simulated impact calculations on the glazing or any of the framing associated with it. But you do consider an impact load for anchors or not? Is no, that we've been doing pressure for the pressure anchors. for the anchors. And so you know hopefully we have you know some type of a uh, a tributary area that can actually be you know tested out. Whenever they've been testing it it has been successful whenever it's taken a direct hit yeah, I mean, at, a, original, at a frame anchor location. The original calculations we did for them was prior to them testing, they were trying to figure out how to anchor it for the tests. Yeah. Um, and then following that, they, it was, I think it was more for an installation manual of sorts that they wanted to find out how to do an installation manual for the anchors. Yeah, so that is covered by calculations. Is there anything on the ICC report that, um, like for last projects, sometimes we have to assign the anchorage uh, to two times that the pressure that we assigned the, the framing elements to, or two times the glass uh, glass capacity? Does the ICC specify any additional uh, factors for anchorage, or do you just take I the? See okay. when I read through. I read through mainly all of the section three. Yeah, and they didn't yeah. provide any yeah. special attention for anchorage. Yeah, hopefully, you know, what we have in place for factors of safety that anchors have been tested for, and many of those anchors, you know, have a, you know, in, in between three and five factor of safety on, on their tested design loads. The, the assumption is and the hope is that whenever these test out, that that safety factor is enough for the immediate impact of, you know, whatever is on it, and it's an instantaneous thing. So uh, it, there's a lot, a lot of capacity for that instantaneous load. That's an impact load. Just curious, it wasn't anything like that eighth inch thick stuff, or? Oh no, it was much thicker than okay. the usual moorings, and much more built, better section. <laughs> Any other comments about that from the design pressures when you look at the anchorage? Do you have to treat the shelter as like its own building and like determine the cladding pressures, or do you have to like well, use the pressures based on like the testing? The interesting thing was since we did it before they were even testing, we there wasn't a building to calculate pressures on. So we they basically came up with the max pressures that you could get, and that's what we've been using. Probably considered on these actual projects we're getting, we probably reduce it based on um, our own calculations, but we haven't yet. Okay. If we were doing it with calc, I would say yeah, you have to because you're dealing with your own standalone little building. Yes. Yeah. Got now like its own corner zone, so it's mm -hmm. also awesome. contrary. Yeah. I don't think we have a corner zone. Well, yeah, I guess we would. If we, it's just like a one tiny little room, 
It's going to be a tiny corner. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be just a little tiny box. But yeah. yeah. It'll still be there. Um, so going back to the hurricane thing, it's actually on uh, Kevin's printout on that page. Eight. The hurricane windows only have a nine pound two by four instead of 15. Nine pound for a large so Okay. And then the Florida code requires 50 feet per second, which is only 34 miles an hour. So it's half the way half the speed. So is it the same as this hurricane shelter requirement down here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so the Florida code calls out, yeah, nine times two by four. Um, category two and three buildings, it's 50 feet per second, which is at 30 miles an hour. Um, category four buildings, it's eight feet per second, which is going to be 50 something. So it all comes down to risk. Then. Yeah. If you're building a shelter, you're going to. A hurricane can't throw stuff as fast as a tornado. So. Yeah. But also, if you're designing in a hurricane-prone region, the entire building has to be designed to this standards. Whereas if you're doing a shelter, like housing, you well, really yeah. cannot afford that shelter to fail and under no circumstances. So you bump up every statistical... So in you know, Florida, you could have a situation where you have large missile requirements for the whole building with a tornado shelter inside, is what could happen. So it's kind of like... Uh, reverting back to blast like the different levels I would, I would think of it like sometimes they say it's okay to let the glass break but it can't fall more than like three, three feet, feet in the building yeah. it's kind of like that like you have one level of safety is the whole building but you have to assume that if there's a tornado everybody's in the gym so yeah. we yeah, it cannot can fail that so yeah, that's your yeah. bunker yeah. that's how it's going to be all right thank you let's uh, break apart into our teams